So the first vehicle is the M2A2. And this vehicle is pre-war. Um, and it wasn't a very heavily armored vehicle. It was actually extremely light for a vehicle. It was 7.8 tons, or no, 8.7. And it didn't have a main cannon. It had a 50 caliber machine gun, which is actually the machine gun that is still used uh, today on a lot of American vehicles and just as an infantry gun. It also had uh, two 7.62 millimeter uh, machine guns as well as secondary weapons. It had a crew of four people, driver, uh, the hull machine gunner, the uh, gunner for the smaller turreted machine gun, and the gunner for the larger machine gun. The It also featured two turrets, and... Yeah, that's about it for that vehicle. The next vehicle is the M2A4 Stewart. Oh, the other one's also a Stewart. The M2A4 Stewart had a 37 millimeter cannon. It was on the same chassis as the M2A2, but it only featured one turret instead of two. And it still had the same amount of crew. It had the driver, the hull machine gunner, the uh, main gunner for the cannon, and the loader. Loader slash um, commander for the cannon. It featured the 37mm M5 cannon. A very decent gun for its size. And four machine guns, one coaxial connected to the main gun, and three hull mounted, aimed by the driver. Well, two of them aimed by the driver, one of them in a ball mount in the hull. So, the next vehicle is the M3 Lee, which was a fairly weird looking tank. It had decent armor, uh, about 50 millimeters at most on the front, and 38 at the lowest point. And it had two main guns, well, I guess, yeah, main guns. One 75mm M2 cannon mounted in the hull with a limited traverse. And one 37mm M5 cannon in a turret on the top. The tank featured six people. The driver, the uh, 75 millimeter cannon gunner, the loader for the 75 millimeter cannon, the loader for the main 37 millimeter cannon on the top in the turret, the gunner for that gun, and the commander. And this vehicle is it, it did fairly decent during the war, but it wasn't that great. Because the only gun that had full 360 degree view was a small gun. And it wasn't a lighter, it's not a light tank, It's a this is a medium tank. And for a medium tank, that's a very small gun. It also had 
um, one coaxial 7.62 millimeter machine gun connected to the 37 millimeter cannon. It had one 7.62 millimeter machine gun that the commander can use in his cupola. And it also had two forward facing hull mounted machine guns that the driver had to aim manually. Um, the next vehicle is the M4 Sherman. And this was basically the main vehicle of the American Army during World War II. And there were a lot of variants of these. Like the uh, cast hull M4A1 or the later variants like the um, welded hull M4A3 and it also could have multiple guns in it like the um, 75 millimeter M3 cannon and this was a short barreled cannon meant for uh, killing anything really not specifically anti-vehicle not specifically anti-infantry but not anti-aircraft it also had a 50 caliber M2 machine gun on the top, M2 Browning machine gun, on the top for, um, depending on which vehicle it is, either the commander to use or someone standing on the back of the engine deck. It also had a coaxial 7.62 millimeter machine gun connected to the main gun, and a hull mounted machine gun in a ball mount that the person next to the driver could use. It had five people, the driver, the machine gunner next to him, the gunner, the loader, and the commander. And the Sherman was a fairly special vehicle because it was one of the few vehicles of World War II that featured a stabilizer. The Sherman's main gun was gyroscopically stabilized, meaning that it was very stable on the move, but at low speeds, so not like top speed, but at cruising speed, it was very, very stable. It had a fairly decent top speed and some pretty decent armor if it wasn't fighting something like a Tiger. The next vehicle is the M24 Chaffee. The M24 Chaffee is a light tank and had the M6 cannon, 75mm M6 cannon, and it was a pretty similar gun to what the Sherman had, the short barrel Sherman cannon, and it also had the same 50 caliber machine gun on the top, but it was only available for someone standing on the engine deck. It also had a coaxial 7.62 millimeter machine gun like the Sherman and a um, hull mounted 7.62 millimeter machine gun like the Sherman with the same type of ball mount. Now this being a light tank, it had very little armor, meaning that almost anything could get through the armor that it had, but it was fairly fast. This wasn't a vehicle that you'd be on the front line. Well, you'd kind of be on the front line, but more of out of the enemy's fire compared to a Sherman, which would be right in the center. Um, it had a less powerful engine than the Sherman, and it had a five-man crew like the Sherman, with the driver, the machine gunner, the gunner, the commander, and the loader. The next vehicle 
is the M4A3 E2 Sherman Jumbo. This was essentially just a up-armored Sherman designed for the... Well, it was designed because the next vehicle that I'm going to talk about is was um, not ready for what this was made for. This vehicle was made for the invasion of Normandy. And basically all they did was they took a normal M4A3 and just attached a 37mm plate to the front and gave it a different turret with a lot of extra armor. Other than that, it's a pretty similar vehicle to the Sherman. The regular Sherman has the same armament. Um, that's about it for that one. The next vehicle is the M26 Pershing. This vehicle was originally being designed for the invasion of Normandy, but it didn't make it in time. And this was a medium tank, and it had some pretty decent armor, and was one of the only, one of the few tanks of World War II that could kill a Tiger II. And one of the, and it was also able to kill Tiger Ones from the front, and it featured a 90mm M3 cannon and it had a five-man crew, the driver, machine gunner, gunner, commander, and loader. It had um, the 50 caliber machine gun on the top, the 7.62 coaxial machine gun, and the 7.62 millimeter hull mounted machine gun in the ball turret. Um, this was a fairly decent tank. Actually a pretty good tank during World War II. It had a pretty decent top speed, pretty good armor, and a really good gun for World War II. It had a decent engine as well for um, World War II and a good transmission. The next vehicle is called the T-95 or T-28 um, super heavy tank and was the only vehicle super heavy tank that America had ever. And this was a prototype vehicle that was originally meant to assault the Siegfried line in Germany, I think. And it didn't make it in time, but they were still developing it, so they decided to keep going with it, and then the war ended. But it had the most armor on the front of any vehicle that I know of. 305 millimeter front plate is a lot. It also had a 105 millimeter cannon, which was a very large gun for World War II, especially for a tank, and could easily go through the front of the turret of a Tiger II. This would have been a very effective vehicle if it were deployed. The reason why it wasn't is because, well, World War II ended, and it was too heavy to be shipped. It weighed 86.2 tons. And when it was during shipping, it was on a train car, and it was so heavy that it just crushed the train car and fell off. And was damaged because of that. Uh, there were two made, and only one of them is still working. 
I think it's working, but only one of them remains. The other one, I have no idea what happened to it. Um, it was an extremely slow vehicle. Um, meant... Th this, this was done, I believe, on purpose for infantry to keep up with it, because it was basically just a moving wall. The next vehicle is the M41 Walker Bulldog. This was a light tank that was designed after World War II. And it had the 76mm which could go through a lot of armor but it didn't have much damage after going through the armor. It featured a crew of four people, the driver, the gunner, the commander, and the loader. It had a coaxial 76.7.62 millimeter machine gun, a, uh, and a 50 caliber machine gun on the top of the turret. It was a fairly fast vehicle. It had very little armor. Basically anything could get through the front of this, even from World War II. And... Well, maybe not anything from World War II, but most stuff from World War II could do it. But it wasn't meant to... absorb rounds. It was meant to be fast and have a good gun and get to where it needs to be quickly. The next vehicle is the M46 Patton. The M46 Patton is a medium tank and it looked fairly similar to the M26 Pershing because it was based off of the M26 Pershing. It has pretty similar armor to the Pershing and pretty similar maneuverability. The main difference between the Pershing and the Patton is the gun. The M46 Patton featured a 90mm M3A1 cannon. This gun was very good and it could fire multiple types of rounds, like the World War II rounds that were used in the Pershing. And it could also fire the new heat fin stabilized round, or high explosive anti-tank fin stabilized round. This used a shaped charge to get through a lot of armor, using less velocity, because the velocity didn't matter with the shaped charge. And it had a crew of five people, the driver, the hull machine gunner, the loader, the commander, and the gunner. It had a coaxial 7.62 millimeter machine gun, a hull mounted 7.62 millimeter machine gun in a ball mount next to the driver, and a 50 caliber machine gun mounted on top of the turret that the commander could use. The commander would have to be exposed to use this machine gun, though. Um, the next vehicle is the M48... or... the M47 Patton II. The M47 Patton II was pretty similar in maneuverability to the M46. It featured a different front plate with more armor and a different turret. 
with more armor. It had the same amount of crew members with the same positions, the same uh, secondary armament, and a different gun, the 90mm M36 cannon. This gun is pretty similar to the one on the uh, M46 Patton. Uh, other than the armor, it's not much different of a vehicle. Other than the armor and the turret. The next vehicle is the M48 Patton 3. Another development in the Patton series of vehicles. And this was substantially different to the M47 and M46. It featured a completely different looking front plate with a lot more armor. A completely different turret with a lot more armor. And a different gun. Although it's a fairly similar gun again. It's the 90mm M41 cannon. It had this time instead of five crew members, four. The driver, the gunner, the commander, and the loader. It had two machine guns, the coaxial... Uh, 7.62 millimeter M37 machine gun and the uh, 50 caliber uh, M85 machine gun mounted in a cupola on top of the turret for the commander to use without being exposed. It was not the fastest vehicle. It is a very large vehicle, which was a problem for it. But it could fire the heat round that could get through a lot of armor. Um, the next vehicle is the M60, which is very similar to the M48 Patton 3, because it was based off of it, but not officially called a Patton. It had a different front plate to the Patton 3, but it had less armor with more of an angle, giving it a higher effective thickness. It had a different turret with pretty similar armor protection and a different gun. This time the gun was the 105mm M68 cannon, which could fire a discarding Sabo round or a high-explosive anti-tank round. These two rounds were very good at getting through armor, a lot of armor, and this vehicle was designed mainly to counter the Soviet T-55 and T-54, because the earlier vehicles couldn't get through their front plate. It had four crew members, the driver, the gunner, the commander, and the loader, it had the same secondary armament as the M48 and pretty similar top speed and maneuverability. It was about the same size of vehicle as well. The next vehicle is the M1 Abrams. So the M1 Abrams was designed as a response to the Soviet T-62. Because they were making a new vehicle with a larger gun. And while the M1 Abrams didn't feature a larger gun compared to the M60, it did feature a lot of new components, like composite armor, which is extremely good at stopping a heat round and also fairly decent at stopping kinetic rounds like armor piercing. It featured the 105mm M68 A1 cannon, had four crew members, the driver, the gunner, the commander, and the loader, and all of the ammunition was stored in the back of the turret with a few rounds in the main hull area, but most of the ammunition was in the back of the turret, where if it got detonated by an incoming round, 
panels on the top of the turret would blow off, not damaging the crew, which was very good for the survivability of the vehicle. It was also a very large vehicle, and the first um, American vehicle that I know of to feature a gas turbine engine, which had its advantages like increased power, um, very reliable engine, but it was very, um, it consumed a lot of gas, and it could use multiple types of fuel. It was also a problem if it got dirty, because if there was a lot of stuff in the engine, or maybe not even a lot, that could be a problem for the engine. Um, the Abrams was a very fast vehicle. It, well, is a very fast vehicle. It also had the 7.62mm M240 machine gun as a coaxial, the 50 caliber M2 Browning machine gun for the commander, and another 7.62mm M240 machine gun for the loader. It is still used today, but not the M1 Abrams. The next vehicle is the M2 Bradley. The M2 Bradley is a light tank mainly meant for well it's it's a IFV or infantry fighting vehicle and this was a more of personnel carrier over a tank instead of having a cannon, or a uh, single shot cannon that you have to reload every time. This has a 25mm M242 Bushmaster autocannon. And it also had tow missiles for uh, anti-tank, or ATGMs, or anti-tank guided missiles. Um, it had a crew of three for the fighting area, well, the driver, the commander, and the gunner, and it could also carry more in the back for troop transport. Uh, this vehicle is still used today, and as a different variant of the M2 Bradley. The next vehicle is the IPM-1 Abrams. The IPM-1 Abrams was a M1 Abrams with increased protection on the turret. That's really the only difference of the M1 Abrams and the IPM-1 Abrams. One thing I forgot to mention about the M1 Abrams is that it could fire uh, discarding Sabo fin stabilized rounds, meaning that it had very good velocity and was fairly easy to aim because it was fin stabilized. This also meant that it you could have a with the discarding sabo you would have a sub caliber round in a larger gun. The next vehicle is the M1 A1 Abrams and this was a large upgrade to the IPM-1 and the M1 Abrams. The M1A1 Abrams featured the 120mm smoothbore M256 cannon. Basically a American licensed built version of the Rheinmetall L44 cannon made by Germany. And this gun was a huge upgrade to the 105mm cannon because the rounds could get through more armor and when they did get through the armor 
it would do more damage afterwards because the rounds were heavier. It also had the 7.62mm M240 machine gun, the 12.7mm or 50 caliber machine gun on the top of the turret, and for all of the Abrams, the machine gun could be remotely controlled, the, the 50 caliber machine gun could be remotely controlled by the commander. It also had the 7.62mm M240 machine gun for the loader. Um, because of the larger gun, it was able to carry less ammunition, but that didn't matter too much. So the last vehicle that I'm going to talk about is the M1A2 Abrams. The difference between the M1A2 and the M1A1 and then there was the M1A2 SEP V2 or version 2 which added the Tusk ERA package on the sides and the same stuff internally as well that the SEP version 1 had.
M32 high velocity cannon in it. This gun was pretty good. It could fire uh, multiple types of rounds, like a normal solid shot, or a high explosive shot, or a smoke round for um, deployable cover. Or it could fire an armor-piercing discarding Sabo round.
is the amount of armor in the turret. The M1A2 Abrams could stop, or can stop, almost any round fired at it if it was shot in the turret. The front plate is a bit different. It has a, about the same amount of armor as the M1A1. It is a weak spot for the vehicle. It had the same amount of crew, the same gun, but I'm sure it could fire more advanced rounds. This vehicle is still mostly classified, so we don't know what types of rounds it can fire and how many and how much armor those rounds can get through. All of the Abrams had the same engine, the Honeywell AG, AGT uh, 1500 gas turbine engine. And the M1A2 had a lot of different variants, like the M1A2 SEP, or System Enhancement Package, I think, which was just an enhancement for the crew and I think a little bit of armor. 